I've been questioning myself a lot lately, wondering what I should be doing and where I should be going, asking myself what's best for me and for Miss Nancy. So when I had the chance for a house sit, it seemed like the perfect opportunity to take a break from the van and remember what's so great about living in a house. One of the reasons I got the van, and one of my favourite things about living in it, is the feeling of freedom, that you can go anywhere and do anything whenever you want. I've been wondering if the van really liberates me, or if that's just an illusion. Can I feel just as free living in a house? Morning, you. You're waking up. There's certainly a lot of amazing things about a bricks and mortar house that you don't get in a van, or not my van anyway. Things I used to take for granted before they weren't there. The ability to wash your hands whenever you feel like it, and never have to worry about running out of water. To be able to shower when you feel like it, and to actually have hot water come out of the tap. And to be able to do it in private, even better. Cooking is so much simpler in a house. More space for preparation, more equipment, more facilities. I have a simple setup in the van, a portable two ring induction hob. I plan this to keep surfaces free and so I can cook outside if I want, but it does mean I'm always looking for simple things to cook that don't take long, as the cooker wears down the battery pretty fast. I love taking advantage of roasting things in the oven when I'm in a house, or making dishes with longer cooking times on the stovetop. Never having to worry about power really does feel like freedom not having to choose between cooking dinner or having working lights. That said, I think one of the most beautiful things about living in a van is being forced to reconnect with the resources behind our daily activities. They are not endless, but finite. And I think living in a vehicle, be it a car, van or boat, puts you back in touch with this and makes you live more mindfully. Although Miss Nancy enjoys the adventures we have in the van, I don't think she really understands why we live in it. She loves going to other people's houses, getting to sit out in the garden, run all over the house and just have more room to be herself. What's going on here? Miss Nancy? Stop that Nancy Drew. At the moment, it's still just feeling super cool to have a whole house to myself, dishwasher, be able to just leave things out. Yeah, that's all still pretty cool so far. Hey you. To be honest, I just think it's nice to have a change. I've never been someone who thought, oh, I have to spend like every single night in the van. Um, no, ring the changes. Change living in a house by staying in a van. Change living in a van by staying in a house. It makes sense. And it makes you be able to go back and appreciate for real what you had before. It's feeling so good at the moment, having the garden, just being able to step outdoors with a cup of tea and uh, just sit down for a bit. It's really nice. It's obviously different from when you're in the van, you kind of end up seeing a lot of different places and that's what I feel most grateful about that for, the opportunity to actually be in different places and be seeing different views and having your cup of tea looking at something different. There's also something very satisfying about the, the comfort of just being able to make a cup of tea and step out into your own garden to drink it. I really think both things are beautiful in their own way. Maybe if you could live in a house half the week and then live in a van the other half the week, that would be perfect. Of course, taking advantage of the washing machine is a big part of any house stay. No, fancy Drew. Windows down. Leave it. Scare the clouds. Smell of spring. I'm sad. Open road. You sit in close. Let's go somewhere far away. As if all I have is you, and I'll be just fine. I was not 
paying attention as I was trying to film. Nat's drew went one way, I went the other, and this little boy got stuck in the middle on a lead. It was great. Oh my god, filming and walking the dog in a towel just doesn't work. She just stuck her head around the corner and almost stole a woman's plastic, which, I mean, that's kind of brilliant, but still. I'm basically trying to imagine what it would be like if I actually lived here. You know, maybe this is what I did every day. I lived in the village and I could walk straight out of my house and see the sea every day, go and sit in the evening and have a glass of wine, looking out at the ocean. Could be pretty neat. Go on then. Surprise! Someone gone back to bed. Have they? Someone's hopeless. Sadly, everything seems to be just settling into a total mess. And that's a bad thing about the house. There's just more available places for me to make a mess and it just spreads. At least the van limits things. <laughs> In the end, do I know which feels more free? I thought living in a van might offer the sense of freedom I was looking for, and in many ways it does. Being able to take my work wherever I go, explore new places with Miss Nancy, and visit far off family and friends are some of my favourite things about the van. But there's a lot both Nancy and I miss other than the comforts of a house, like a sense of community and a feeling of belonging. There's a lot of comfort in a house waiting for you at the end of the day, friends and neighbours. Yin, yang, light and dark, every positive seems to have a negative. All I really know is how much I don't know. Being able to try things out is probably as freeing as it gets, and nothing is forever. As long as there's a comfy greyhound bed involved, I guess things are going okay. So I think for me and Miss Nancy, probably a little bit less time thinking about whether things are right or wrong and what I should be doing, and a bit more appreciating what I've actually got, because what I've got at the moment is pretty awesome. So. I'm going to try and live in the moment a bit more and just feel very, very grateful for what I do have right now.